Hello there, I'm Scotty. You're not in the uh, welcome to the wrestling corner. We're gonna talk about Backlash France. I don't know, if people are smoking. People said this this was a banger. This was not as good as last year's. People are saying it's better than AEW Dynasty. No, I don't watch AEW, but I have a hard time believing that. I, and I've heard people say, well, looking at on paper this doesn't look very good, but it ended up being pretty good. Well, it ended up being what it was presented to us. B level pay per view that they couldn't even be bothered. Look, I'm sick of this. We should have had Sami Zayn versus Chad Gable on this pay per view. We should have had the WWE Tag Team titles on this pay per view. It's five matches. And the matches, see, look. Triple H is defending the decision to have less matches because he says he doesn't want the pay per view to go on for a long time. Then shorten the length of the damn matches. Yet we don't need 20 minutes for each fucking match. We don't need. This match, okay, so it's this started at noon for us, right? Didn't get over to 3 o'clock. That's three hours. Five matches should last three hours, right? If each match is a half hour, one, two, and a half, I guess, two and a half, three hours. But still, you can ha add more in. I just, I don't. Think a pay per view card means anything if every title is not on the line. I don't know there are a lot of titles, but hey, the two main titles for the first time in four fucking years, both titles were on the line at the same pay per view in a row. Because you know, WrestleMania, you had both titles, and now both titles are on the line at a, I should say, at a, at a B level pay per view, right? Both titles. Roman's off doing whatever. Stop slamming that goddamn door. Do whatever. I just... I don't know. It felt like we needed more. You go back, you watch old pay-per-views, right? And almost every title is on the line. <clears throat> we get one or two. We get four titles tonight. And, but, and, and that's another thing. Every single match was so predictable. Like, it was so predictable, in fact, that I got every single one right. So, yeah, every single prediction right. I got a queen sweep because it was so predictable. There were, there was an un, there was a very, something very unpredictable that happened during the first match, but... You know, it was still, the show was still overall predictable. I kind of predicted what was going to happen, but who it was was not who I predicted at all. But let's go ahead and get started with this. So we have the Bloodline versus RKO. Randy Orton, Kevin Owens. It's uh, Solo Sikoa and Dama Tonga versus Randy Orton and Kevin Owens in a tag match. And I was complaining before. Why is this a regular tag match? Well, <sighs> during this, it got so hectic and out of control that Nick Aldis came out and made it a street fight tag team match. Why the fuck didn't you just do that before? Because they didn't know what they were booking until the night of the show. Like, oh, uh, we gotta go out and do this. So yeah, and again, I was like, this match is starting off the show, really? Like, the Bloodline was headlining reviews last year, and then we saw the show here. It's because we have the actual WWE, I refuse to call it Undisputed, championship on the line, actually. So, I guess Cody versus Brock was the main event last time, right? Or was it Bad Boney versus whatever? Anyway, yeah, this match was pretty good. I would say this is probably the best. Look, people were praising the match between Cody and AJ. And I'm sorry. When you know who is going to win, the match loses all of the... It's of any attraction. You knew AJ wasn't going to win. So I'm basically just sitting here waiting for it to end. 
Was it an impressive match? Was it a good match? Yes, but it means nothing when you know that when you know who's going to win this. That's what that's what I feel like for a lot of these. Where you already know the outcome; it's so obvious. But you know, like I said, this one is probably the most surprising match because, yeah, it's anything goes now. Street fight, and they went pretty well into the announce tables and everything, and then. When it looks like the good guys are about to win, who is that that pulls the referee? Is it Jacob Fatu? No, it's Tonga Loa, Tama Tonga's brother. And I was shocked because I was like, what? Everyone was saying, oh, Jacob Fatu's coming tonight. Jacob Fatu's coming tonight, today, whatever. And it was Tonga Loa. And it's just like, wait, what, what, what? Hmm? Scusa? What? Yeah, and so the bloodline wins because of that. This new bloodline, apparently, apparently if, if Jacob Fatu does join, this new bloodline is going to have Solo as the main event guy, Jacob Fatu as the tag, or as the, the mid card, and then these two, Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa as the tag team. Paul Heyman looked very confused as well. He had no idea what was going on. So, yeah. Next, we had the triple threat match for the women's championship. Bailey versus Diffy versus Naomi. This was pretty good. Naomi took the pin. Bailey retained, of course. Uh, it's not Tiffy time. I again, it's very predictable. You knew Bailey wasn't going to lose the title right away, but each of them had a pretty good showing. Tiffy was pretty good, despite these other two bozos that were over here. They're not here now, but they were. Dissing her during Tiffy time. You do not diss during Tiffy time. Okay? But yeah, it was a pretty decent match. Next, we have the World Heavyweight Championship. Championship match, as Brian Zane would say. World Championship. And it is Damian Priest versus Jay Uso. And again, this is a good match. But when you already know who's going to win, you're just waiting for something to happen. You go, yep, of course. And during this, J.D. McDonough, J.D. McDonald's double cheeseburger, ba -da -ba -ba -ba, and Finn Balor got involved. Even though Damian Priest said before not to get involved. But they helped him beat Jey Uso. And then after the match, Damian Priest was very pissed. So, yeah, he's not happy. And people are saying, why is he not happy? Well, because he didn't want them to get involved. That's why. Then we had the Women's Tag Team Championships, Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill versus the Kabuki Warriors. Obviously, Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill won. It was a decent match, but again, kind of a theme. When you know who's going to win, it just takes all the win out of the sails. So, yeah, it just... Pfft. Yeah, it's just... When everything is so obvious, it's... It, it really loses any kind of entertainment value, for me anyway. Where it's like, well, even if you know who's going to win, they can put on a good match. They can put on a good match all they want, but to me, I'm just sitting here going, when's it going to end? It's obvious this person is winning, and they were just sitting here. Especially when Triple H likes to put on long matches, and you're sitting there going, <sighs> it's like, that's why I think if the outcome is going to be obvious, add more matches to it, make them shorter. That way, more matches, shorter match time, at least you can get a good value out of the shorter matches. We can have more we can have Intercontinental title online, US title online, one or two of the tag team titles online. We could try to do everything in a shorter time frame. We can have about seven or eight matches. And still have it go three hours with a shorter thing. Because here's the situation with that. It's not just five matches and it's not just the match time. They insist on showing us promo packages for every match. The same promo packages that you'll see in the pre-show so you don't need to air them again. And I know that for the, the, the regular Peacock subscribers, just, just for the regular paid... It's ads, 
So that's why they do it. But we don't need to have that in there. It just wastes time. And then they insist on having their superstars have very long entrances to the ring. Get rid of that. You can scrunch that down. You can also lessen the match length and have a couple more matches in here. You could have had Chad Gable versus Sami Zayn. You could have had the Street Profits versus A-Town Down Under, and that would have been fine. Add more matches to it, decrease the length of the other matches. Because again, this match card was so obvious that it didn't matter. For me, at least. I'm sitting here just waiting for them to get to the end and go, of course, they won. It's obvious. But no, long matches, and I'm sitting here going like this the whole time. Just waiting for it. And I nearly fell asleep during the main event. Not because of it's a boring match, but just the whole idea of, I know Cody's retaining, so what's the point of getting invested? That's the situation. You, if, if the people at home already know who's going to win the match, you're going to lose their investment. You're going to lose their... Uh, Attention. There was a point where all three of us guys were sitting here on our phones during one of the matches. I think it was the Jake Cargo match, but during one of the matches, just because, you know, we lost our investment in attention because we knew who was going to win. And that's the same thing. Even though they wanted the Boogie Warriors to win that match, and I kept telling them it's not going to happen, and they got all pissed when it did happen. They're like, it's bullshit. I'm like, well, you knew what's going to happen. And even DeGroby's like, a uh, uh, new superstar shouldn't win the title right away. And I didn't say anything to him then because I couldn't think anything right away. But Carly O, right? Carly O showed up, won the United States Championship first night in WWE. So, yeah. So we have a main event, Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles. And while it was a good match, I'm not going to keep repeating myself. But again, my attention was not held because I knew... AJ wasn't winning this. And again, and I'm just throwing this out. They could have done some kind of a post-match angle that could have really hooked us. But as it was announced, like yesterday or whatever, that they don't really have a plan for Cody Rhodes until Roman Reigns and The Rock come back. And I think that's bullshit. I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that it's not true. I'm saying it. That it's bullshit that we have to wait for those two to come back to do anything with Cody. Because we should move on from the goddamn bloodline with Cody. Because as last year proved, you have nothing creative for the bloodline. And now we have this what's going on now. But that's because we moved on from Cody. If Roman Reigns retained, we'd be in the same old damn thing again and now we have something going on but we don't need we need to separate the bloodline from the wwe championship Roman reigns that's not deserved to be anywhere near that title for maybe the rest of his career and i know you roman kiss asses can go off on me but i'm serious roman does not need to go near that title any major title again for the rest of his career be the Shawn Michaels where he almost gets it but never does. Give him that kind of gimmick. You know, Shawn Michaels gets title matches and is over there to help put talent over or get put over by talent, but never gets that title again. He doesn't need it. But I'm comparing him to Shawn Michaels and he is nowhere near that level. And I've seen all these kiss asses kissing his ass and after maybe like a week after oh it's boring without roman we need him back no we don't let him stay away people say oh he's gonna come back for something for SummerSlam. And i'm just like i don't care because i've said this on various social media stuff but roman reigns is one of the most overrated professional wrestlers in wwe history in wrestling history he's one of the most overrated WWE champions, in my opinion. Everybody praising him for his four, um, about four-year title run all those times. But he did nothing. He barely showed up. When he did, he needed to have help in every single damn title defense. He never once won clean. Ever. And you guys are praising him like he's one of the best? When you have to have help winning every single goddamn fucking match, 
You're not the best. You're a punk. And you deserve to be thrown out. He is probably... I don't say he's one of the worst. He's a decent wrestler. But when you have to be saved by your family every time... Oh, he's calling me. I'll call him back. It just doesn't... No. Roman Reigns is the most overrated wrestler in history. People keep kissing his booty cheeks. But you should know you're wrong. So, yeah. To the match, though. Cody... Versus AJ. Like I said, it's a good match. Cody hits like a, they call it a super. You, you don't know me, it could be called a, a top rope or avalanche. Cody cutter, but because they renamed it super in the video games, now it's a super Cody cutter. He hits the crossroads, he wins. Actually, he doesn't even hit the crossroads. Is it roll up? No, the roll up is in the women's match. So he wins. It is very quick, though. But, yeah, and they don't even do a post-match angle. It's just, he's celebrating, and then we go to the the uh, the highlight package, which I still don't understand how they do that, how they would have put the highlight package together when this is live. I don't know. But, like I said, I think maybe this was a little overhyped for how good they, people are saying it was. It was really wasn't really that good. If I was giving a star rating, which I probably should do, uh, it'd be a, uh, I'll get three out of five stars for me. If I'm going by the Brian Zane ranking, it's a three out of five star show for me. I just, it was all too predictable. I, at the end of the day, I didn't care. Everything happened the way that I thought it was going to. I have a queen sweep. I got every single match prediction right. The only thing that really surprised me was Tangaloa. Otherwise... Everything was, yep, I won, yep, she won, yep, they won, yep, Cody won. Predictable. But I'm going to go now. So what are your thoughts on Backlash France? France? Oh, by the way, they announced WrestleMania is in, in Vegas. And to whoever made that decision, when is Minnesota going to get a time? Now, I wouldn't be able to go because I'm not I'm not freaking rich. I have a, I mean, I, I'm not poor, but I'm not. I couldn't afford a WrestleMania ticket. Even one, of, even a nosebleed is probably too much for me. Because those things are overpriced as hell. But, come on. It was heavily rumored it was Minnesota. And out of nowhere, like a week ago. Like, it was heavily rumored before WrestleMania 40 that Minnesota was getting it. Almost confirmed. Until all of a sudden last week, they're like, oh, I hear Vegas. And I'm like, when? And now it, it is confirmed to be Vegas. By the way... They told us that they were going to confirm it during the Kentucky Derby pre-show thing. And me and the girl, we sat here and watched it. And there was nothing. I had to find out from social media. So, I don't know. Again, it could have been on the actual televised version. We were watching the Peacock version. So, maybe. But, I don't know. So, let me know how much you thought of this show. Thank you for watching. I'm Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.